and I've seen things go from um, good to okay to fairly bad to really bad and, and we're probably in the worst situation that I've seen. It's not like Colorado's known to have the best roads. It has been harder than we thought it was going to be when we started the company. I think we have really good system of, of medical care and hospitals. The difficulty is making sure that all of our population has access to that. Transportation, jobs, education, health care, these are pistons in the engine that makes Colorado run. It's a cycle, and in Colorado it's our job, no one else's, not the legislature, not the governor. It's the job of the people to make sure this system is working for everyone. We start our journey in Cortez, Colorado, one of the most diverse areas of the state. Justine Bales and Matt Kieflover are longtime teachers in the Cortez School District. We have a very diverse population here at our school. We um, are adjacent to two um, Native American reservations, the Navajo Reservation, the Ute Reservation, and we also have a really nice mixture of agricultural rural families who um, make up our school district and our students. You know, there are people, parents of mine, for example, who work two or three jobs, and so they don't have things like time for homework in the evening and coming to events and things that happen to school. Cortez is one of the poorest school districts in Colorado. Our facilities literally are crumbling around us um, and things like ceilings that leak when it rains, that sort of thing. Um, walls that are, that are not, that are basically falling apart from the outside in. This is basically each classroom teacher's wish list and these are all things that we weren't able to buy because we have no funding for our classroom budget. So people from the community or parents can come in and they take a pedal off and then they buy that, that thing for the classroom. Some of the things are really basic like staples, um, copy paper, and things like that. The schools in Cortez have less than most other districts in Colorado. I don't think our students see it, um, so I, they don't. They they have never known anything else, so I don't. I don't think that they are aware of the the differences, and I don't think a lot of the parents um, are aware of the differences and just what our school is lacking. I believe in my heart that all students should have the same opportunity in the state of Colorado, so that if they go to school in Douglas County or they go to school in Cortez, they have the same amount of funding. So they have up-to-date textbooks, they have teachers who are well-paid, they have buildings that aren't crumbling around them. That lack of support isn't because the community doesn't believe in the schools. I think um, parents and most of the people in our, in our county support the educational system. Whether or not they are able to financially contribute is a whole nother question. That spells trouble for many children who already have too much struggle in their lives. We see a lot of um, children who come from poverty, you know, and I'm sure these same struggles exist everywhere, but in order to break that cycle of, you know, alcoholism, of drug abuse, of, you know, just all those social problems that we have, education is the only way to do it. When we educate our children, then, then I believe that things will start to fix themselves. For teachers like Justine and Matt, the path they see Colorado's education system taking is frightening, not just in Cortez, but all across the state. I really see on the current path uh, crumbling infrastructure in terms of schools. I see uh, a real struggle in even finding teachers who are willing to do the job that uh, they, they've wanted to do their entire lives. I think that um, we're going to grow further and further behind other states in terms of um, uh, producing students who are well-rounded, knowledgeable. The one piece of this picture that is missing is the voice of the student, that our students aren't able to say what they're missing or what they think that they're being, you know, what's being left out of their education. But I see it every day. I see that there are students who come in the door who need you know, who don't get breakfast, who maybe go home to a, a terrible, you know, home life, or maybe they don't have parents who are home to help support them. Those are the students who need a voice. Let's leave Cortez and head on up to Denver to talk jobs. 
Grant Swanson co-owns a small business called GB3. Our job is to work on houses and make them more comfortable, more healthy, and more energy efficient. Grant's small business hires workers. As his business grows, he hopes to be able to create more jobs. We hire people to perform energy audits for us, and we hire people to do retrofit work on homes. But there are problems. It's been challenging to find and keep good people. It's Betty Hyde's job to help Grant find good workers. She's the CEO of Green Job Outsourcing Brokers, and she has her finger on the pulse of Colorado's job market. I would say it's still not great by any means, but it's improving, it's getting a little bit better. Uh, employers are a little more open to be hiring, and so we're finding a few more jobs opening up. If Grant needs workers to fill jobs at his business, and Betty has workers looking for jobs, then what is the breakdown? According to both of them, it's education. I think our educational system doesn't quite deliver what we need in the workforce. While we've had people, some people, come to us with training already, um, most of them we've had to get trained after they've arrived at our doorstep. The problems teachers Matt and Justine pointed out in our education system hit home in the real world when it comes to hiring workers. We've got to find some way to fund education if we want to have a workforce that is capable of working. I think you get what you pay for. Um, you know, when we go out to do our job, um, we're in competitive bid situations and we're rarely the cheapest contractor because we do a good job and we go the extra mile and we charge accordingly. And I think that a public education system is no different that if we want really good results, we cannot starve our public education system in Colorado for funding. But if you don't fix the money piece of it, I don't think we'll ever be um, world class in K through 12 on the cheap. It just doesn't work that way. Funding education is good business sense as well as good for Colorado's economy. We'd have a better employee pool from which to draw. And more broadly, um, if Colorado is known as having a better, better educated workforce, it's going to have a ripple effect on the economy. That means community colleges and trade schools must also step up, retraining people to fill the jobs of a constantly changing economy. There's always going to be jobs that require people to work with their hands. You know, those kinds of jobs cannot be outsourced. And so we're always going to need people to do physical kind of work but we need to have the people ready to do that. And it's not just that they need to learn electrician skills or carpentry skills or plumber skills, but they also need to have some good math background because in order to be a good carpenter or plumber, you have to understand math. They also should be good communicators. Now let's head up Interstate 25 to Wellington, Colorado, just north of Fort Collins. Up there, we find Grant Family Farms, a community-supported agriculture farm, or CSA. We are the largest CSA in the country. We have over 3,000 members and growing. Um, we also ship wholesale um, throughout the country and locally. Grant Farms delivers its produce to stores and homes all along the Front Range. That means driving, lots and lots of driving. We drive a lot. We have six trucks a day go out for CSA, and I'll have one to six trucks going as in semi-loads of produce going out, depending on the day of the week. So, so up, up to 12 trucks a day. I'm basically the one responsible for loading, delivering, unloading all of that said produce anywhere from the northern Colorado area to as far south as Colorado Springs and sometimes beyond into some of the mountain rural areas as well. And when it's your job to deliver fresh produce to market for a living, the roads you drive on can make or break you. If it's wholesale, if you miss an appointment, you may be returning with that load back to the farm, which is no money in pocket at all. Uh, time is money for a truck. It's fuel, it's, it's a driver, um, not to mention that you have perishable product on that truck as well. The folks at Grant Farms will tell you good roads mean fresh food on your table at better prices. A good road um, will significantly reduce my cost, not only in fuel usage, 
uh, but maintenance of the vehicles. Reduced costs for us, which immediately mean reduced costs for the consumer and our customer. Which is why the folks at Grant Farms hope to see Colorado invest in its roads. And all the miles we put on vehicles, any investment into roads is going to affect us positively. Uh, it's going to reduce our costs. Let's hop on those roads and head on down to Douglas County, where Dennis Valentine has lived for the past 31 years after graduating from the Air Force Academy. Education has always been the big um, opportunity generator for our society. It certainly was for me and my family. But Dennis sees the opportunities dwindling for Coloradans to get an education, and he worries what that legacy means for his grandkids. My father and mother-in-law went to the University of Colorado. All of my wife's family have always gone to Boulder. And then two of our daughters we sent to Boulder. And the financial stress was a lot different. Scholarship monies were not as readily available, and the tuition and expenses were much higher. I've got three grandkids. Uh, one is in high school and is planning to go to Boulder. And I know that the expenses for him to go to college will be a lot greater than they were for his grandfather or his mother. And Dennis sees those escalating costs of education as bad for Colorado. Well, I don't think that's good for any of us as citizens and taxpayers um, because Education is the great generator of jobs and opportunities. Today, Dennis works with the AARP to advocate for Colorado's seniors. We maybe in 2010 had about 10 percent of our population that was over age 65. It's going to go to 15 percent and then by 2030, 18 percent the projections are. And that population is going to need more services, particularly health care, and, and we're going to have to invest to provide that. Health care, education, transportation, police and firefighters, these are all services Dennis fears won't be there for his grandkids. Things like health care services that we provide, prisons and highways and other types of services, education, they are going up at a higher rate than the revenue streams that we have designed. At some point, we're gonna to have to realize we can't keep expecting these services without being willing at some point to pay for them. Dennis has watched over the past 20 years as Colorado has made cuts to these services and still managed to get by, but he fears we're reaching a breaking point. The, the ingenuity of our public um, agencies that they have been able to do more with less. They've become more efficient. They've done a better job of providing services. But at some point, you just can't do more with less. At some point, you're going to have less. From Cortez to Wellington, to Denver, to Douglas County, the services that make Colorado work are struggling to meet the demands a growing population and a lack of revenue place upon them. We have problems here in Colorado. Most everyone agrees on that. So what can be done? So it's our job as to, uh, to adults to solve these problems and come together so that we can support our children so they can be everything that they can be. That we really need to talk to people. Maybe that's one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe it's a community forum. Maybe it's through newspapers. Maybe it's uh, through just, just contacting them and saying, you know, this is a crisis. This is something that has to be addressed in their really direct consequences to underfunding education in the state. We have to talk about what that means in terms of real choices and the opportunities that are foregone in terms of public services and public programs that affect all of us. There's one other thing everyone seems to agree on. Talking about raising taxes and cutting services isn't something folks want to do. It's, it's nothing that anyone wants to talk about. I mean, got enough stress in my day. Well, I mean, I always thought it was more of the elected officials that were supposed to be doing that. I'm not an accountant. I'm a driver. <laughs> Do 
taxes have that negative connotation torn toward to them but there's a reason we have taxes and there's a reason we have elected officials and that's for infrastructure that's for security that's for schools um, none of that is free it, the, the funds have to come from somewhere in Colorado though it's not the elected officials who are responsible for this in Colorado our Constitution gives that job to us the people unlike in any other state we're all responsible we have to make sure we're educating all Colorado kids that all our seniors have access to the health care they need and that our roads and infrastructure are kept good working order. There needs to be some minimal standards that we want of a fair and just society and that can only be provided through public means. And there has to be the right balance. Um, do I want to jump up and down and say I want to pay more taxes? No, but if I understand what those are going for and where those taxes can save me and other costs Again, it's the right balance. Everyone in Colorado has a heart, and I totally believe in the human spirit in that once people begin to understand the struggles, that they, they will open up. Our future is our kids, and if we don't invest in our children, we have no future. So we have got to do something to make sure that we're doing what's right for our children.